Hey, John here. We're going to do two things today. First, we're going to get threading working so we can have the AI run in the background so it doesn't stop our animations. And two, we're going to actually put some animations into the program. Uh, let's get started. All right, let's go over what I did. First things first, I uh, import thread, which is from the uh, <clears throat> Python standard library. Uh, down here in the AI thinking state, I, instead of launching and get move here, which paused the program and locked it up, I'm now doing a thread, start new thread, get AI move, which is a function I just now wrote, and pass it no parameters, because I don't need to see anything. Um, Choices, and in here is actually where I do the work. Choices equals game.getMove. And then um, I'm sending the information back to the machine that I got launched from, the choices. So AI move is the input choices. Um, that's really all there is to it. And But this will run in parallel, or not truly parallel, threaded with the uh, this main app. So it'll kind of be running in the background. Meanwhile, It'll exit on entry and just stay there in that state and the animation and Kivi should all still keep running. We should actually see the word AI is thinking right here. <clears throat> and then um, uh, when it gets that input for AI move, it stores the choices that were made because it was passed into as the first parameter right here to right here. And then change state to animate AI, AI and then we'll get down to here. Um, let's go ahead and run this. Actually, before I can run it, <laughs> I once again made another change to fixed layout. Um, so I'll do that real fast. Instead of saying true place, true size, I'm using the, I'm going to be more standard and use the size hint and position hint um, uh, functions that are already part of Kivi. Um, kind of the, why reinvent the wheel. So I'm going to do a quick search and replace on here and then we'll run this app and see what it does. <laughs> All right, let's try this out. All right, click on a house. It says AI is thinking and it's not locked up. And after a second or two, it shows animating and now it's my turn again. Okay. Now it's not saying player do your next move. And I think I figured out the logic for why that is. Um, I really do need to add one additional state to this program because there's a difference between waiting on the pit and actually beginning a turn because it kind of reset a few things at the beginning of the turn that you don't want to reset whenever you go back to waiting for a pit. So I'm going to go ahead and add another state before this one called um, class um, let's see start user turn. How's that? Okay, let me write this. I'll be right back. Quick check. Player choose house. AI is thinking. Player choose house. There we go. And it should be now if I do this. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five. So if I click this. No, oh, it needs to tell me to uh, play again. Let me do that real fast. That's right. Okay, if I do this, one, two, three, four, 
play, and I didn't store play again. Now notice it didn't put a zero there. That's a that's going to be dealt with much later because we need to come up with animation moves uh, both for the for the uh, AI side and for the player side where that actually shows a dropping in the pit. We're not going to do that today, but we're going to do that soon. Let's put a little animation in the system. I'm going to just do two quick things. I'm going to do a standard regular animation where I move the hand up and back down again whenever the AI is playing its turn. I'm going to put some kind of indicator uh, to let them know that the AI is thinking. Okay, here in Animate AI Choices State, we're going to create an animation move. So um, move hand animation. And we need to choose some kind of characteristic or a property of whatever we're moving. So in this case, we're going to move the size and no, the no, position hint. Um, to, let's see, the original location was 500 zero. I'm going to move it to, um, let's move it back a little bit, 400 and 300. And we're going to go to two animations because I want to bring it back. So you can actually just add them, which creates an animation sequence. So position hint equals. That'll take it back to where it was. So it'll move it up and out and back down again. Uh, we need to apply it to. Apply it to our thing so move hand dot we're going to create a function to, to do the proper thing when it's done with its animation so on complete equals um, done moving hand so we'll write that function in a moment and then move hand start Self ref kivy user hand. And quickly, we're going to write done moving hand. I believe it passes back the sequence and the widget. Yeah. So, what do we do when we're done moving the hand? Uh, if ref self.ref game is over then self.change state uh, end of game I believe I called it EOG else self.change state start user turn which is the new state we just created now we take this away from here so this should start the process here binding it to this to run when it's done moving the hand otherwise so when it's done here it'll just gonna hang out in this state until it's done moving the hand and then it'll change state let's save and try this out Didn't work. Let me find out why. And here we go. There it is. It's animating. Player choose a house. All right, let's throw on one more animation. Um, I'm going to use pull one from the uh, Kivi's garden, they call it. Essentially, it's a library of extra widgets you can throw in. I'm going to import one called Progress Spinner.
All right, I'll show you what I've done. I've added a new entry into the uh, KV file called Progress Spinner. Uh, weight on AI, size hint of 100. Uh, here's position and auto start to false. And then here in wait for here in AI thinking state, I uh, wait on AI, start spinning. I just in the progress spinner class, there is simply a function called start spinning and stop spinning. So we should see it. It should be as simple as that. That's kind of nice. Let's try her out. Oh, it didn't install. Oh, <laughs> I actually have to install it. I believe it is uh, garden uh, install dash dash app. Make sure it's put into my app rather than into my overall operating system. And, uh, and then what I want here, which is progress spinner. There it is. Now let's try it. Oh, there it is. Simple enough. It's not kiwi.garden. It's kiwi.garden. And then the file I just downloaded. So progress spinner. Import progress spinner. Okay, now let's try it. Okay, player choose a house. You guys thinking there's our spinner animating his move and I will choose I'm gonna steal from him or oh, actually that's not stealing from him that's landing in the store let's play my next move yeah he's thinking Wow, it won again. The AI that thinks ahead six moves is pretty good. What we're going to do tomorrow is finish up the animation. But to do that, we're going to have to modify our GameEngine.py file a little bit because we need to get the, the sequence of moves for moving the hand to pick up the seeds out of each pit and where to drop them. That'll be interesting to do. If you like what you see, please subscribe. Thanks.